my respected brothers and under Islam. This is not a speech. This is rather a figure and concern that how the deen is living from our lives and the Muslim Ummah is going down. And how we should do the effort of deen so deens come back to our life. And the Ummah, you see, it used to be at the top. And wherever the Ummah go, you see from Sayyidina Omar bin Khattab, what you can see, the Islam really grow, 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 grow fast <coughs> to the extent that Muslims are really literally ruling the whole world, you know. <coughs> and Allah's help are with them because the teachings of Nabi Kareem sallallahu were in their life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me a deen that is how should we live a life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we are human beings. He created us as human beings. And human being, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it, you and me, Ashraf al mukhluqat see, but still he himself has mentioned so many deficiencies in you and me in the Quran. You see, on the one hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيلِ No doubt about it. Right? On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, وَخُلِكَ الْإِنسَانَ ضَعِيفَ You see, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you see, وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولَ إِنَّهُ خَسِيمُ إِنَّهُ خَسِيمُ مُبِينُ You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has created us, <coughs> so he knows and he's kind that, that inna al-insana lakana zuloom and jahula. We are, mashallah, PhDs and you know, MDs and so many scholars and so many everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْإِلْمَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا We know so much ilm, so much ilm that human beings know today. But still, what we know is nothing compared to what we do not know. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He revealed the book, and He begin with Alif, La, Meem, those people who will get the benefit of that, you see, they denounce that, we are, yes, we do not know. So then they will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the knowledge. My respected brother, this kalma, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. The Sahaba Kram, you know, get this reality with great sacrifices. After going through a lot of hardships, a lot of hardships, you see. So we can mention one, two, three, hundreds and hundreds of the stories of Sahaba Kram, that's my, that how they work hard to get this reality that who is Allah. You see, our beloved brother, brother, you see, what Tarek was mentioning to us, same thing. They took the shahada, they embraced Islam out of the darkness. When they got the light, you see, they become different personalities. <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing to you and me that deen, this deen is not the inheritance. <coughs> this deen is not the inheritance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the guidance and the hadayat to whom he likes. You see, my respected brother, to the extent we all know Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his beloved uncle, Abu Lahab, <coughs> you see, when the story came to him that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is born, so the lady, she was the slave girl of that, you see, Lahab. Lahab means whose forehead is shining, you know. He was very beautiful, very handsome, tall and wealthy and chief. So, <coughs> there you see lady with the, with the, the sign of his finger, they say, Sovia, you are free from today. She slave, that slave girl, he freed just like because of the happiness and joy. And then he feeds so many people because of the joy, because Prophet ﷺ was born as an orphan. You see? The same, you see, uncle, you see, when Prophet ﷺ gave the message, and he was the most, you see, enemy of Nabi Prophet ﷺ is going and talking to the people, 
and on behind he is also doing the gush. He is behind Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and telling the people, do not believe my nephew is Majnoon. You see, because they feel that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is bringing some other religion or something. You see, so my respect to brother, this hadayat. Abu Talib, father of Ali Rasulullah Ta'ala and father-in-law of Fatima Rasulullah Ta'ala and very close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost both of his parents, you see, and also his beloved grandfather passed away, <coughs> Abu Talib, you see, he was a real shield on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, when he passed away, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it has not even passed one month. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, oh my uncle, I really miss you. Because the enemies, you know, they start giving him so much hard time. You see? And you see, he loved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the extent that he will put his own son to sleep here. Then he wake up on the middle of the night, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from that place and take Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to some other place so that no, no, nobody should you know, try to attack him. So that he is safe. Sometimes he will sleep on the same spot Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left and put Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam somewhere else to sleep. My respected brother, after having all this, his, his wife's name also the Fatima, she always gave a shower to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first, gave clothes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first, feed Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first and her own kids. You know. But when Abu Talib was dying, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is like, you know, you know, really sincerely from the heart, oh uncle, say in my ears, this kalma la ilaha illallah, so I, I can intercede for you on the day of Qiyamah. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see, felt so much grief, he didn't take shahada. On this occasion, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had feel so bad and so, you know, so his feeling so much grief on his heart, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the ayat, إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يِشَّعْ The Prophet of Allah is not whom you wish Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give the hadayat whom he likes. And then Bala Rizillah used to recite this ayat. If the hadayat was in the head of the Arabs, I may have not been the Muslim. So my respectable, the, what the treasure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you and me in the form of this kalma la ilaha illallah. Believe you, we cannot say thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, we do not actually, Muslim, as I was asking the question to the sheikhs, you see, that the born Muslim do not realize the reality of it. A person could have the whole world, you see, for all was the richest person at his time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him so much health. For 450 years, he never had a headache. You see, in the Quran is mentioned, wa fir'auna dil autads. The man of the gold, you see, wherever you put the tents, you see the, the what they call, the, the nails he used was made of the gold, you know. And the hammer they used, they were made of the gold. Such Allah SWT has given, this much kingdom Allah SWT has given to him, you know. But, Hadayat was not written to him. However, his wife took the Shahada. And she became, she got the highest rank in the paradise. And she, she went, when you see Khatija Razi Allah Ta'ala is passing away, her time has come and she on the last breath. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, oh Khatija, say my salam to Asiya. So she asked the question to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Prophet of Allah, how come, you know, I am your wife and you have not married any, anybody else? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has married me to Asri Razi Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions this story in the Quran. وَذَرَبَ اللَّهَ مَثَلَ لِلَّذِينَ 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 Firaun, you see, Mimrat of Firaun. إِذْ قَالَ رَبِّ بِنَا لِئِنْتَ كَبَعْتَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجْجَنِي مِنْ فِرَانِ وَعَمَلَيْهِ وَنَجْجَنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ That you see, one time, <coughs> she is combing, the, the, she had a frown and a slave woman, and she is combing the hair of her, her daughter. So the comb fell down from her hand, and she said, Bismillah. She picked her up. In, other, in another narration, 
While she is putting the oil to, the, to that girl, she said Bismillah and start putting the oil. So then this daughter, Quran's daughter asked, who is Allah? So she then explained that I have embraced the, the Allah of Musa and Harun and he's my Rabb. He's, then she asked the question, my daddy is not the Rabb? My dad is not the Rabb? Is there any other Rabb other than my, you see, my dad? So she couldn't take it. She gave the message to Firaun. So she gave her as much hardship to that old lady, you see. And what he's asking to that lady, that if you denounce the religion, I give you this much gold and this much money and this much this and comfort and this and that. But if you do not denounce Islam, then I'm going to punish you and kill you and this and that. And she threatened on the other, other side. One final instructor, brother, scholar, have said, when my Iman enters into the heart of the believer, it's just like the fragrance you cannot hide. You put a fragrance, if somebody has put the fragrance, it's not visible, but you can smell it. It comes, it comes, you see. Similar to the condition of the Iman. Iman reflects the actions. The believer's actions are different than the believer who don't have the Iman. You see? So this lady, she said, you can do whatever you want on the cross that I am not going to denounce. And it is mentioned that she has two daughters. One was in the lap and one was like two years old. And one of the relations is three years old. The Bukhari Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went going to the Mirage, you see. So from, from you see, Bethel Muqaddas is going up. So soon he goes up a little bit. So the fragrance coming from the paradise. So Prophet ﷺ asked, O Jibrail, what kind of this fragrance it is? And then he is narrating the story to Nabi Wasallam. In my words, I am telling you. That what happened to the slave lady and this and that. He said, O Prophet of Allah. So Firaun snatched the girl. He burned the oil over there. And in front, he, a lot of people came to see. Because he has punished her. He has, you know kept her hungry and for so many weeks and so many days and she's not denouncing Islam. She said, once I say, La ilaha illallah, Musa Kareemullah, and I believe in the Allah, who is the sustainer of the seven heavens and seven earth, and we are also going to back to him, or if she's saying, oh Firam, he's also your Rabb, whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not, he is our Rabb. He is the Rabb of all, all the mankind. But he don't want, because of the, out of the arrogance, as you say, you see, out of the arrogance, he said, no. Because when, when the things come around you, the power is there, the money is there, so many people working for you, and you have full power and control, the people become blind, you know. They cannot think that any other way. So he said, no, I am the Rabb. So he snatched, he said, the, the, the little, you know, the three years old or two years old, and throw it into this, this burning oil. And of course, it doesn't take too long. You see, within minutes, she become roasted and become ashes. You see, now think about the mother. You see, it's, it's easy for me to, you know, to narrate this, narrate this story to you and it's easy for you to listen. But what happened to the mother? You see, she's seeing the girl is burned alive, you see. And then he asked her the same question. If you don't renounce now, I'm going to throw this little one also. And then you after her. So she said, oh, Firam, I believe in Allah, I have to die. I'd rather die on Iman than on Kufr. So he snatched the little one from her, from her, you know, from her lap and threw her also over there. And many people cry at that time. Of course, it's a baby, it's a baby. And then she, she stayed the same. And the Pharaoh eventually then also threw her over there. And before she threw, if she was thrown, she made a request to Pharaoh. I have one request to you. I have only two daughters. If I have more, could have sacrificed for the Islam, for the deen of Musa. But I have one request to you. Whatever the bones and ashes are left from us, you bury us together in one grave. And he promised that he would do that. O Prophet of Allah, since they are buried on this earth, 
the fragrance is coming from this you know ground and it will continue to the day of the hours. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Asiya radiallahu ta'ala anha saw all that, so she also said that lady has so much truth in herself, she did not just see deviate here and there. So the, the Musa's rub is the true rub. At that time she also announced La ilaha illallah Musa Kalimun. She believed in the Rabb of Musa. So see, and then Pharaoh did the same thing to her. Soon he found out that my own, you see, wife has become, they love each other. But she said, no. She was, she been the mother of Musa Ratuslam also. So she said, no. Once I say, I believe the two daughters and the mother, I saw it with my own eyes. She was so confident. I don't see any blink on her eyes. She don't have, she don't have any kind of, you see, worry on her face. So that is the true rub. The message she has given to you is the truth. He is our sustainer. He is our rub. So then, you know, Pharaoh cut down her food, kept her hunger for a long time, and then kept her as a prisoner in the house. Doesn't work for months and so, and he's so upset. But that is, this, he was the first one to have this kind of punishment that he had, just like, you know, we give the funeral to the dead body on the wooden plaque. He made over there, Asiya was laid all over there on her hands and on her feet. She go the nails through her hand. And she was bolted over there. Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since she had made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa najjali min fir'ana wa amali, wa najjali min al-qamil dhu'alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the same thing. Her soul was departed before you see she could take more pain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also accepted her dua. The highest place near the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Muqam al-Mahmoud. Nobody else can do it, you see. And she being a woman, how can she be there? The Prophet ﷺ was married to her, you see. Because this, this you know, place, highest place is going to give to Nabi ﷺ. My respected brother, the point here is the hadayat to believe in Allah, to believe in Muhammad Sallallahu is a true gift of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is given to whom he likes. It is given, it is this hadayat is given to whom Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. So my respected brother, we know that Namrud, he threw Ibrahim Islam on the fire, right? And he saw for 40 days, the fire has not done any effect. Soon Ibrahim came out of the fire, he went to him. That you have seen that I am alive, this fire which they burned, which they collected the woods and all those material which you see ignite the fire. And they make a big hole and big dark ground, see, just like we do the construction of a building. The more high building you have to go, the more, you know, you go deep into that. That kind of situation they have it. The whole city of Bible, they collected the woods because they want to take the revenge. Now Allah from Ibrahim to Islam because he has cut down all their idols, statues. He said, oh Namrud, don't you see? that my Allah is Haq, my Rabb is Haq. Don't you see the fire has not done, not even my single hair was burnt. Oh, I'm not going to mention the story, just want to touch this base point. But it still, not, still did not come into the fold of Islam. However, our daughter, you know, became Muslim. My respect to the same thing happened to the Quraysh of Makkah. Abu Jahal, he is the chief of the Makkah. He is known as the very wise person of the Makkah. That is why he is called Abu al-Hakam, the father of the Hikmah. You see, his name is the father of Hikmah. This is, this is like, you know, we call a nickname that he is so smart. He is so smart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the wealth also. He is a rich person. He has all the wisdom there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him the hadayat. Even he, he saw so many times, so many miracles. You see one time Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passing by and he said, Prophet of Allah, he cannot talk shahada unless these pebbles, you see, give the shahada that you are the Nabi. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the pebbles in his hand and the pebbles from you, from this palm, is saying, as salatu wa salamu ya Rasulullah. And he heard that. 
He heard that. You see, he saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw so many things happening. He heard the, you see, the incidents of Isra and Miraj. You see, he knew. And then he reconfirmed the people the caravan was coming from, you know, from Ayatul Muqaddas to here to the Makkah. What happened to their camel? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them what happened to the camel. He heard all those things, but still he negated. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put the hadith for him. But his son, Akram al-Azillah ta'ala, no, is a great Sahabi. He took the Shahada. <coughs> when he opened the Quran and he will say, Hada kalam wa rabbi, Hada kalam wa rabbi, and he will fall down unconscious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this much iman. This much is a love for the Book of Allah. Same thing, my respected brother, the Shiva, you see, and Abi, this Mughayra, <coughs> And then see those, the chiefs of the Makkah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given them the, 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 the garden of, you know, dates, gardens of graves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given a lot of camels and goats and sheaves and trade and everything. But they know he is the prophet of Allah. They know, you see, that he is the true messenger of Allah. Everything is there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is holding their heart. You see, even though the message was there, they have a choice, they have a chance, and they make a fun of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, my respected brother, this is the great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has honored us. And what is that gift of Hadayat that we believe in Allah from the core of our heart? That Allah is the one who is doing everything. Allah is the one who has created me. Allah is the one who has written down how much I'm going to live in this life, the rizq and the things which are going to happen. And I have to go back to the grave. I have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I am responsible for that. My respect, well, this is called the yaqeen, which we we'll talk about over and over again. You see, how much Sahaba Karam and Ajmaeen, they believe in the yaqeen on the unseen. You see, Prophet Sallallahu one time make a deal with a person from the villagers, he's called the Arab, Arabi. He's selling, he bought, Prophet Hassan bought from him the camel. And the money was, you know, agreed. Prophet Hassan said, let me go home and bring the money for you so that I can, I can give you the money. So they agreed on the money. When Nabi Sallallahu is coming back, he start dealing with somebody else. So Prophet Sallallahu said, you already have agreed to me to sell this camel. Why you make an agreement to somebody else? Because he probably offered some more money. So he said, I didn't make any agreement with you. O Prophet of Allah, he didn't, he didn't know that he is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I didn't make any agreement with you. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I did that. We did it just like few minutes ago. So he said, bring any witness. You see, here comes Abu Khuzama Razi Allah Ta'ala is coming from the other side. And he said, I make witness that, that Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made the, the contract with you. Did you all, you both have agreed on the price. He said that the camel person has bought it. So when the deal was over, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was You were not at there at that time when the deal was, you know, there. Why you stand like this? Then listen to this his reply. O Prophet of Allah, you are the messenger of Allah. <clears throat> we are hearing from you the news of the paradise and we believe. We are hearing from you the news of the hellfire and we believe. We are hearing from you the news what is going to happen in the hereafter. We get the message from you the, about the ayat of the Quran and we all believe into that. And my heart is saying you will never die for this small thing. So Prophet said, from this day to day, Huzayma's witness was considered as two times, you know, two persons witness. So my respect to brother, Sahaba Karam al they learn the Iman. You see, the, hard, the hardship they have gone through, you see, that make them strong and strong and strong. It will make them weak. You see, my respected brother, <coughs> Prophet Sallam, at the time of the Battle of Trench, Prophet Sallam distributed some of the area to tell Sahaba Karam that this, this much for you to dig, this much for you to dig, this much for you to dig. And the times come, they were one strong rock, so they cannot break it down. So they try their best. And then see, they came to Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet of Allah, this rock is too hard for us. 
So you help us out. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi stood up there and he had that, you see, kya usko bolte hai? Kudal? Chess. Huh? Chess. Chess? Chess. 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 Yeah, Chess. Prophet bit it and the spark came out of it. The spark came out of it. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah Akbar. So what happened? <coughs> and third, second time and third time, like this. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told them that the first time I hit this one and the, and the light came out of it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala show me the palaces of the room, they will be coming under your feet, the Sahaba Kram. And Sahaba Kram say, Allah Akbar. You see, and the second time I did it, I was, I was shown that the, that, the, that the palaces of the Kisra will be under your feet. Say, Allah Akbar. And the third time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala showed me that the, that the palaces of the Yemen will be under your feet, of the believers. Now the, all the non-believers, they start making fun of it. They start laughing. You see that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, you see, وَمَا مِن نَّبِينَ إِلَّا كَانَ بِهِ يَسْتَحْزِيُونَ Hadn't be any prophet, the people don't make fun of it. So they say, look at that. Their condition is such, they don't have the clothes to wear. They don't have the food to eat. And they don't have enough to defend themselves. They are, they are hiding themselves under the, under the ground. And they are dreaming to have the power over Rome and over Kisra and over the Yemens. But the believers said from their heart, yes, it's going to happen. And it all comes toward the time of the Umar bin Khattab. You see, one person over there came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a prophet of Allah. Three of you are saying that very strange to me. I cannot, I cannot understand what you are talking about. You are saying that the Fatah Makkah, Makkah will come to us. We will, we will go back to Makkah as a victorious. And then you are saying that the Kisra, Kisra, the Rome and the, and, the, and the Iranian Empire will also come under our feet. And you will be ruling that. And then you are saying the day of Qiyamah will be resurrected. The Prophet of Allah, these things don't make any sense to me. You see, I see the condition of you and the people around you, they are so poor. You see, you have hardly to wear anything. You have very hard means to, to survive, no clothes to wear. And the things are so, you see, hard. What are you talking about? You're dreaming about those things? It doesn't make me any sense. The Prophet ﷺ said that you, two things you will see in your life. The first two things you will see in your life and the third thing, I will be looking for you on the day of Qiyamah. I will hold your hand and remind you what I have said to you. You see, and this will also come true. So what happened? You see the Fatah Makkah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is still alive. The Makkah came into the, Sahaba Karam came into the power of the Makkah, you see. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi went as a victorious back to Makkah. But this person did not took the Shahada. He was thinking that, you see, lusty, because Makkah was their own, they have the strength in Medina, and this and that, this happened, that happened, this political or that political. So he did not convince himself. But the time of the Umar, you see, he, the, the both, you know, the big powers were also surrendered. So Muslim came, overpowered them. Then he, then he shivered. He said, oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told me, that this power will also come under the feet of the believers and I, I, I better for me, I become a Muslim. He came to Umar bin Khattab and took the Shahada and told him that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told me these three, three things and I am taking Shahada because two things have happened in my life, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told me that two things have hap will happen in your life and the third thing, I will hold your hand, I will find you out in the day of Qiyamah, I will hold your hand and let you remind you what I have been said and tell you. Over, I am afraid, I rather take Shahada today because if I die in condition, I don't want to die as non-believers. He took the Shahada. He went back to his village and then he frequently started coming to Medina because he wanted to learn what is the new message, what the beautiful moment is saying, how the believers are learning. So anytime he comes to Medina, Umar bin Khattab let him sit next to him. He will honor him. And then he will, you see, go with him up to the door and, you know, see him off. So, Sabah Karamala Khan said, see it a couple of times, and then they asked the question of Viru Mumineen, why so, so much special regard you are giving to this person? Umar Khattab said, don't you hear what he's telling you? 
What is telling us? The Nabi Sallallahu is telling him that the day of Qiyamah, I will I'll find you out and hold your hand and remind you about the things I have promised to you. What do you think? If Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi holds somebody's hand on the day of Qiyamah, he will not let, let hold his hand unless he enters into the paradise. This person is from the paradise. So I honor him because of this, that he is among the people of the paradise. This much, you know, love and this much yakin they have in their heart. My respected brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me the reality. At that time, the thing was still so many shaky, you see. Now we have the complete Quran in front of us. The seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is in front of us. All the things are settled down now. You see, my respected brother, if we do not believe, if we do not follow the sunnah of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we do not take this route to get to our destination, really we'll be doomed, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and me to be a Muslim. I mentioned to you the incident, you see, about the hadayat. That's why it's very important, my respected brother, that in our, what we're lacking today, our yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is weak. We don't think that he can do everything. The people, say, you and me say la ilaha illallah, but our yaqeen is still on our shop, on our businesses, on our degrees, on our worldly, you know, things. Allah, we say yes, Allah is sustainer, but with my shop, but with my business, but with my earnings. How Allah can do that? You see, when Jamaat went, one of the was telling you, see, we went to see somebody, he's from England. And he said, I want to go with you, but I have so many bills to pay. I want to go with you for 40 days, but how can I go? They say, make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will do. You say, Allah can do without money? He asked the question to the Muhammad can Allah, can Allah do without the money? You see, this is the question the believers have. So my respect, brother, we have, we are thinking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like, like this much resources he has. It. You see, he, his, you know his resources, kun fayakun. Inna wa amruhu iza arada shayyan an yukura lahu kun fayakun. How many billions of people been eating from this, from this, you know, universe? And how many creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been eating and enjoying and taking, you see. Can we imagine how much air, how much air of breathing, you know, uh, when you, this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consuming a day? We are not the only creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about the ants and the animals and the sheep and the goats and the horses and the fish. And I mean, you can, we can even count them. We cannot even count them. And so many jannat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, so many angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. You see, my respected brother, we cannot even imagine one female mosquito, she laid down 300 eggs at a time. One female mosquito, and how many mosquitoes in our back home and here? How many flies are there? How many ants? You throw something here, the ants will come right up here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is claiming this, and we don't have a trust. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, anything he has created, he is responsible for the risk. 